My name's Bob Stanley. Uh, I'm a music writer. I'm in a group called St. Etienne. Um, and I've got a book out called Let's Do It, The Birth of Pop, which is uh, about the first half of the 20th century and how uh, the various forms like jazz and blues and um, Hollywood musicals all came into existence, um, which I wrote because the book didn't already exist. I used to write a fanzine in the 80s uh, with my friend Pete Wiggs. Uh, neither of us was, was a musician, but we were obsessed with pop music. Um, and then one week the NME said, anybody around the country who's not, uh, not based in London, basically, um, send in an example of your work and we'll see if we, want to, we can give you, a, give you a job here. So I just sent my fanzine in. I was living in Peterborough at the time. And uh, James Brown, who went on to do Loaded and other stuff, he was, um, he was responsible for this. And he, he liked my fanzine and gave me a job reviewing Johnny Cash. So that was the first thing I ever did, 1987. And uh, yeah, did that work for Enemy and Melody Maker. Uh, then St. Etienne started kind of by accident. Me and Pete went into the studio with a bunch of samples, ended up making a record that did quite well. Uh, became a club hit called Only Love Can Break Your Heart. Um, and the, you know, the group's still going, which is, <laughs> yeah, we, we didn't foresee that 30 odd years later. Um, but once, once that kind of like that kind of started to slow down a bit in the late nineties, I went back into writing, um, and that's what I do most of the time now. I'd always wanted to be a music writer. I mean, because I, I couldn't play an instrument, I never thought I had a, I, there was never any chance of me making a record because like, samplers didn't exist when I was a kid. And uh, but I could read other music writers. I could read smash hits. I had a writer called Tom Hibbert, who was very funny, um, and uh, writers like Nick Cohen who wrote a book called What Bop A Loo Bop, which is kind of like a history of pop music he wrote in 1969. Uh, so it only, only covers about sort of like 15 years, basically. Um, and these were like people I really admired and people I, you know, I wanted to be like. Um, so while I used to watch Top of the Pops every week, I never thought there was any, literally no chance of me getting on there. So uh, um, yeah, so music writing was definitely the thing I, I, I wanted to do. And even though I had no idea how, how you went about that, and it wasn't until the sort of fanzine Fanzine culture started up, but um, that I, I became a part of that. Yeah, fanzine culture and DIY culture uh, is the, the reason you know I started writing and started making music. You know, uh, without without that, um, it just wouldn't have been possible. I, I, I guess I could have just like written a review and sent it into NME and see if they wanted to print it, but I wouldn't have ever had the confidence to do that. And I think. Um, the, the mid '80s, there was, there was a, there were obviously around punk. There was a massive fanzine scene which died down a bit. And in the mid '80s, it came back again. That's when I was, when I was involved in it. But it was, um, you know, people like Alan McGee had a fanzine before he started Creation. I remember buying a copy of Communication Blur off him. Um, so it was, you know, people who went on to uh, do various things. Jim Lambie, the artist, he did he did one in Glasgow. Um, it's, uh, it was. Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a world where like, people basically in the provinces, I suppose, as well, got to know each other and had this like, network, um, much, as, much as the sort of DIY bands at the end of the 70s did, uh, sort of post-punk groups. Um, this whole like, kind of like, subculture that was like everyone was just basically writing to each other, like, like pen pals, effectively. Um, and uh, that, yeah, that, that helped push music forward and uh, it, it, I think you know maybe being a small country helped as well because it was easy to go and visit people. We were going to visit people in Glasgow and Manchester and Newcastle who I, I didn't really know, but we just used to write to each other. Um, so yeah, yeah, and the DIY world was was, was really was really important. Collaboration has been really important uh, musically for me. I, I couldn't really do anything without working with other people because I've never had the patience to learn how to play an instrument or use software. So <laughs> I've always thought I can come up with ideas and if I can work with somebody who can make, you know, who can, who can do this 10 times faster than I could, then I'd, I'd rather do that. Um, writing's obviously totally different. That's very solitary and uh, can be quite hard. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, the musically, it's, uh, without, without other people, I couldn't do anything. So. And it's also it's also a lot of fun to work with different people because then you get different ideas. And people, you know, people. Everyone works in a different way. Um, everyone writes songs in a completely different way. So uh, it's uh, yeah, 
working with other people is, is, is crucial. The thing I've got now that I didn't have when I was 15 is just a lot more confidence, I suppose. I just had none then, and there was like no one around to encourage you. Um, so I think, yeah, I think just like, it, it's, it's, it's easy to say to a teenager, well, you know, be yourself, but um, it's, it, it's, it's as simple as that, really. It's like, you know, just have, have uh, sort of trust in your own instincts and your own tastes. Uh, and they might, might seem out on a limb, but you know, that's, that's what's gonna make you different and stand out, I suppose.